chosen ones, what I'm about to tell you may surprise and even shock you. But if you found this video, know that it's not by accident. If you are watching right now, it means God takes your vengeance. The battles you've faced, the betrayals you've endured, the pain you've carried, it's not for you to handle alone. The vengeance you've been seeking, the justice you've been waiting for, is not yours to pursue. It belongs to God. Life can feel unfair, right? People betray you, backstab you, and sometimes it seems like they get away with it. They walk around like they did nothing wrong, leaving you with all the hurt and frustration. You might see these things happening every day. Whether it's someone at work who takes credit for your efforts or a family member who constantly undermines you, these situations can make you want to fight back and seek revenge. But here's where this topic connects directly to your everyday life, chosen one. You don't need to lower yourself to their level. You don't need to fight these battles. The higher purpose of your life is to stay focused on the path God has laid out for you. When you understand that God sees everything, and God's justice is greater than anything you can imagine, you'll realize something powerful, God takes your vengeance. Before we dive deeper into this, I want you to do something important. If this resonates with you, like this video, subscribe to Astral Aura, and help us reach 10,000 subscribers. Leave a comment with 77 foot to send a powerful signal to the universe, and don't forget to play this video on repeat to gather all the energy from it. The more you engage with this, the stronger the signal becomes, and trust me, the universe is listening. Chapter 1. The Weight of Injustice You felt it before, that crushing weight of being wronged. Whether it's a betrayal from a friend, a lie someone spread about you, or someone taking advantage of your kindness, it leaves a deep scar. The kind of hurt that doesn't just fade with time, but lingers in your soul, affecting the way you view people, trust, and even life itself. It's in these moments, chosen one, that you're tempted to strike back. You're tempted to make them pay for the pain they've caused you. After all, they hurt you, and it feels like you deserve to see them suffer the way you have. In your heart, you might start to wonder, if I don't stand up for myself, if I don't make them feel what I've felt, then who will? It feels like letting them get away with it is the ultimate injustice. You might even replay scenarios in your mind over and over, imagining how you could have reacted differently, how you could have delivered a verbal blow that would leave them speechless. You want to hurt them, because deep down, you believe it will somehow heal your wounds. But here's the thing, vengeance is heavy. It's like a burden that pulls you down the moment you decide to carry it. The anger, the frustration, the bitterness, it consumes you bit by bit. You see, when you're focused on making others pay, you lose sight of your higher calling. You become wrapped up in the negativity of the situation, and that energy weighs you down. The burden of seeking revenge doesn't just affect your mind, it seeps into your spirit, poisoning your peace and joy. When you're consumed by thoughts of vengeance, you are no longer aligned with your true purpose. You are no longer connected to the higher plan God has for you. The frustration from one person's betrayal can start to bleed into every other area of your life. You may notice it affecting your mood, your interactions with others, and even your ability to pursue your own goals. It's like trying to run a race while carrying a boulder on your back. You are not moving forward, you are just struggling to stay upright. In everyday life, it can feel impossible to let go of the desire for revenge. We live in a world where retaliation is often seen as strength. When someone cuts you off in traffic, when your co-worker sabotages your efforts, when that family member who's supposed to love and support you turns around and stabs you in the back, how do you walk away from that? How do you not want to fight back? Society teaches us that if we don't defend ourselves, we're weak. But chosen ones, here's where you need to shift your thinking. God sees everything. God knows what you've been through, the pain you've endured, and the wrongs done to you. Trust me, nothing goes unnoticed. 
Just because you don't see immediate consequences for their actions doesn't mean that justice isn't coming. God is not blind to your suffering. He is not indifferent to your tears. He sees every moment of pain and frustration, every sleepless night where you replay the hurt over and over again in your mind. And here's the powerful truth you need to hold on to. The same way you've been rising above the chaos, God is working behind the scenes. You might not see it now, but divine justice is being prepared. God's timing is perfect, and His justice is far more comprehensive than anything you could ever deliver yourself. Where human justice is driven by emotion, God's justice is driven by divine order. It's not reactionary, it's purposeful and transformative. When you hold on to vengeance, you're essentially saying that you don't trust God to handle the situation. But remember, it's not your responsibility to make sure everyone who hurt you pays for their actions. That's for God to handle. The Bible says in Romans 12 verse 19, Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, It is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. Let those words sink in. It's not for you to avenge, God will repay. And when he steps in, the justice is far greater than anything you could ever imagine. You see, when you let God take control, you release yourself from the heavy weight of vengeance. You don't have to spend your energy plotting or imagining what will happen to those who hurt you. Instead, you can focus on what truly matters, your growth, your healing, your journey. You can walk away from the bitterness, knowing that divine justice will always come, even if it doesn't come in the way or the timing you expect. Think about it. God is infinitely wiser than we are. He knows the hearts of every person involved, and he knows how to deliver justice in a way that not only addresses the wrongs, but also restores balance. While you're busy being consumed by anger, God is busy preparing a justice that will leave no stone unturned. Choosing to let God handle your vengeance doesn't mean you're okay with what was done to you. It doesn't mean you're excusing their actions. It means you're choosing to trust in a higher power, in a divine plan that is far beyond human understanding. It's an act of faith to believe that God's justice is greater than any revenge you could ever imagine. So, chosen ones, it's time to lay down the weight of injustice. It's time to stop carrying the burden of making sure everyone who hurt you pays for their actions. Instead, trust that God is in control. Trust that the universe has a way of balancing the scales, even when it seems like the people who wronged you are winning. They are not. They never were. God's justice is coming, and when it does, you'll see just how much better it is to leave it in his hands. Let go of the desire for revenge, and make room for the peace, freedom, and blessings that are waiting for you on the other side. Chapter 2 The Cycle of Pain when you carry the desire for revenge, you're not just holding on to the hurt that someone else has caused, you're allowing it to fester and grow within you. The anger and resentment become like a poison that slowly seeps into every area of your life. It may start small, with just one person who hurt you, but if left unchecked, it spreads. That bitterness can affect your relationships, your work, your mental health, and even your spiritual journey. Chosen ones, revenge is a trap. It promises satisfaction, but it only leads to more pain. Think about it, when someone hurts you, the natural response is to want to hurt them back. You feel like it's the only way to restore balance, to make things right. But in reality, all you're doing is perpetuating the cycle of pain. When you strike back, you're not just responding to the original offense, you're adding to the negativity, creating more opportunities for hurt and anger to flourish. It's like throwing gasoline on a fire, thinking it will put the flames out. But all it does is make the fire burn hotter and brighter. And this fire of vengeance doesn't just stay contained to the person who hurt you. It spills over into other parts of your life. You may find yourself becoming more cynical, more guarded, and less willing to trust others. You may start to question the motives of everyone around you, 
constantly wondering if they, too, will betray you. This mindset keeps you locked in a prison of your own making. You are so focused on protecting yourself from being hurt again that you don't realize you're cutting yourself off from the healing and love that God wants to bring into your life. But here's the thing, you can choose to break the cycle. You don't have to stay trapped in that prison of bitterness and revenge. You have the power, chosen one, to release the hurt, to rise above the pain, and to walk a different path. It's not easy, letting go of the desire for revenge can feel like you're giving up control. But the truth is, you were never in control to begin with. Vengeance belongs to God, and the moment you let go of that burden is the moment you allow God to step in and do what only He can do. Every day, you are faced with opportunities to either perpetuate the cycle of pain or to break free from it. It's in the little things, when someone cuts you off in traffic, when a co-worker tries to take credit for your work, when a loved one says something hurtful. How you respond in those moments sets the tone for your entire journey. You can choose to react with anger and resentment, or you can choose to respond with grace, trusting that God sees it all and will handle it in His way and in His time. Letting go of vengeance doesn't mean you're letting people off the hook for their actions. It doesn't mean you're excusing the hurt they caused. It means you're choosing to rise above it. You're choosing to trust that God's justice is far more powerful than anything you could ever deliver yourself. And when you choose to trust in that divine justice, you are freeing yourself from the weight of carrying that anger and resentment. God has a plan for your life, and it's a plan filled with peace, joy, and purpose. But you can't fully step into that plan if you're weighed down by the desire for revenge. That desire keeps you anchored to the past, constantly looking back at the people who hurt you, instead of looking forward to the amazing future God has in store for you. It keeps you stuck in a place of pain, rather than allowing you to move forward into a place of healing and growth. The truth is, chosen ones, that you are not meant to carry the burden of vengeance. That's God's job. Your job is to trust Him, to release the hurt, and to focus on becoming the person he created you to be. You were never meant to live in a state of anger and resentment. You were meant to live in a state of peace, knowing that God is in control and that he will handle the people who have wronged you in ways that you never could. So, what does it look like to break the cycle of pain? It looks like choosing forgiveness, even when it's hard. It looks like trusting that God's justice will prevail, even when it feels like the people who hurt you are getting away with it. It looks like focusing on your own healing and growth, rather than on what others have done to you. And it looks like walking in the peace that comes from knowing that God is working behind the scenes, preparing a justice that is far greater than anything you could ever imagine. Chapter 3, God's Justice is Perfect there's something profoundly reassuring in the knowledge that God's justice is perfect. Unlike human justice, which is often flawed, hindered by our emotions, biases, and limited perspectives, God's justice stands apart as flawless and eternal. When we try to seek vengeance or deliver justice ourselves, we tend to act out of raw emotion, whether that's anger, hurt, or frustration. In our pain, we often feel the urge to make the other person experience the same suffering they've caused us. But in our attempts to carry out justice, we usually end up harming ourselves even more. We act hastily, speak rashly, and allow our emotions to cloud our judgment, pulling us deeper into a cycle of pain and regret. God's justice, however, operates on an entirely different level. It's pure, untouched by emotional turmoil or human bias. It is never driven by impulse, but by deliberate, measured wisdom, fully aligned with His divine plan for all of creation. When God delivers justice, it's not merely about punishing those who have wronged us, it's about restoring balance, healing deep-seated wounds, and bringing about true and lasting transformation. His justice reaches beyond the surface of the issue, it digs deep, addressing the root of the problem to bring about change that endures and leads to wholeness. When we place our trust in God's justice, we are making a choice to believe that He sees the entire picture, past, 
present and future. It's an act of faith to trust that he knows what is best, not just for us, but for everyone involved. And that's an essential aspect of God's justice, it's not narrowly focused on punishing those who've wronged us, instead, it's designed to bring about a greater good. Often, this greater good is something we can't see in the moment, but one that will eventually lead to healing, growth, and restoration for all parties involved. Isaiah 30 verse 18 provides a powerful reminder of this truth, yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you, therefore he will rise up to show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. God's justice is not about retribution alone, it is intricately woven with grace, compassion, and restoration. When you wait on his justice, you are not just waiting for those who have hurt you to be held accountable, you are also waiting for God's grace to step into your life, to heal your heart, restore your peace, and bring about a justice that is far more profound and complete than anything you could bring about by your own efforts. So, chosen ones, lay down the burden of seeking vengeance. Release the need to make others feel your pain. Instead, trusting God's perfect justice, knowing that he will address those who have wronged you in his own time and in his own way. When his justice unfolds, it will be far more powerful, far more healing, and far more transformative than anything you could ever imagine. Rather than focusing on retribution, allow God's justice to work in its perfect timing, bringing restoration not just to you but to everyone around you. In trusting Him, you'll find that His justice brings not only accountability but also redemption and wholeness in ways you may have never thought possible. Chapter 4 The Power of Letting Go Letting go of the desire for vengeance is one of the most liberating things you can do, chosen ones. It's a decision that can transform your life from being consumed by bitterness to living in peace and freedom. When someone wrongs you, it's natural to want to hold on to that hurt, to keep replaying the events in your mind, thinking about how you could have responded differently or imagining ways you could get back at them. But all of that energy, every thought, every moment you spend holding on to that pain, is energy you could be using to grow, to heal, and to elevate yourself spiritually. Letting go doesn't mean you're weak, and it certainly doesn't mean that what they did to you was okay. It means you are strong enough to release the control that the past has over you. Every time you hold on to that anger or desire for revenge, you're allowing the person who hurt you to have power over your life. You're letting them control your thoughts, your emotions, and your peace. But when you let go, you're reclaiming your power. You're taking control of your narrative and deciding that their actions will not define your future. This is easier said than done, though. In our day-to-day -day lives, we encounter situations where we feel slighted or disrespected, and it can feel almost impossible to not react. Whether it's a co-worker who undermines you, a friend who betrays your trust, or even a stranger who offends you, our natural instinct is to react. But chosen ones, reacting in anger only keeps you tethered to the negativity. When you choose to let go, you're making space for something greater. You're making space for healing, for peace, and for God's plan to unfold. You might wonder, how do I let go when the pain feels so fresh, so raw? It starts with a decision. You have to decide that your peace is more important than holding on to that pain. You have to trust that God sees what happened and that he will handle it. That's the hard part, trusting in what you can't see, believing that God is working behind the scenes, even when it feels like the person who hurt you is getting away with it. But make no mistake, chosen ones, God does not let injustice go unnoticed. Every wrong done to you has been seen by the one who matters most. And in his time, justice will come. It may not look like what you expect, and it may not happen when you want it to, but God's timing is always perfect. In the meantime, your role is to let go and focus on your own growth, your own healing. One of the greatest gifts you can give yourself is the freedom to live unburdened by the past. When you let go of the need for vengeance, you are no longer weighed down by the actions of others. You're free to move forward, 
to focus on your purpose and to live in the peace that comes from knowing that God is in control. You are no longer reacting to the world around you, you're creating your own reality, one filled with grace, love, and divine justice. It's important to recognize that letting go doesn't happen overnight. It's a process, and it takes time. Some days, you might feel like you've let go, only for the pain or anger to resurface when you least expect it. That's okay. Healing isn't linear. But every time you make the conscious decision to release that hurt, you're moving closer to true freedom. There will always be people who try to bring you down, who hurt you, or who betray your trust. But when you let go of the desire for revenge, you are no longer giving them the power to control your emotions or your future. You're stepping into the fullness of who God created you to be, and you're aligning yourself with his plan for your life. Chapter 5. Your energy is sacred. Your energy is one of your most valuable assets, chosen ones. It's what fuels your dreams, your relationships, your spiritual growth, and your connection to the divine. But when you're focused on revenge, you're allowing your energy to be drained. The people who wronged you, whether intentionally or not, are siphoning your power as long as you're consumed by thoughts of vengeance. This is not what God intended for you. He designed you to live in abundance, not scarcity. He created you to walk in peace, not turmoil. Every time you think about getting back at someone, you're giving away a little bit of your power. You're focusing on them instead of focusing on yourself. You're investing your energy into a negative situation rather than into your growth and your purpose. And the more you focus on them, the less you have for yourself. This is why it's so crucial to protect your energy. Not everyone deserves access to it. Not every situation deserves your attention. When you're consumed by the desire for revenge, you're in a state of reaction rather than creation. You're reacting to what happened to you, rather than creating the future you want. But when you let go, you're shifting from reaction to creation. You're taking your power back, and you're redirecting that energy into something far more meaningful, your own growth, your own healing, and your own journey toward your higher calling. Think about how much lighter you feel when you release the weight of revenge. When you stop focusing on what others did to you, and instead focus on what you can do for yourself, your energy shifts. You are no longer tied to the past, and you're free to step fully into the present moment. This is where your power lies, chosen ones, in the here and now, in your ability to create the life you want, regardless of what others have done to you. God wants you to use your energy wisely. He wants you to invest it in things that will lift you up, that will help you grow, and that will bring you closer to Him. When you're focused on revenge, you're wasting that precious energy on something that doesn't serve you. But when you let go, you're allowing that energy to flow into something far greater, your purpose, your dreams, and your relationship with God. Every day, you have a choice. You can choose to focus on the people who hurt you, or you can choose to focus on yourself. You can choose to invest your energy in bitterness and anger, or you can choose to invest it in love, peace, and growth. The choice is yours, chosen ones. And when you choose to protect your energy, when you choose to let go of the need for revenge, you're aligning yourself with the highest version of yourself. Remember, your energy is sacred. It's the fuel that powers your soul. Don't waste it on people or situations that don't deserve it. Instead, use it to build the life you were meant to live. Use it to deepen your connection with God, to heal from the past, and to step fully into the future He has planned for you. God sees everything, and He knows what you've been through. He knows the people who have hurt you, and He knows the pain you've endured. But He also knows the strength you have within you, and He's calling you to rise above the hurt, to let go of the desire for revenge, and to focus on your own journey. You are powerful beyond measure, chosen ones. And when you protect your energy, when you let go of the things that drain you, you are stepping into that power in a way that will transform your life. 
Chapter 6, Trusting in Divine Timing There's something profoundly difficult about waiting for justice. When you've been wronged, when someone has hurt you deeply, the natural reaction is to crave immediate balance. You want to see them face the consequences right away, to feel that sense of closure. But God's timing operates on a different plane than ours, chosen ones, and that's a truth that can be hard to accept. His justice arrives not when we want it, but when it has the greatest impact, the most profound transformation, and is most aligned with his divine plan. It's not just about retribution, it's about the unfolding of something far more significant in your life than theirs. Patience in the face of injustice isn't just a virtue, it's a test of your faith. Can you hold on to the belief that God is working behind the scenes on your behalf, even when it feels like nothing is happening? Can you trust that justice is being prepared, even when the people who wronged you seem to be getting away with their actions, or even thriving? This is where the depth of your faith is truly tested. It's one thing to trust God when things are falling into place, but what about when it feels like your cries for justice are being overlooked or ignored? Trusting in divine timing requires a deeper understanding that there's a purpose in the waiting. It's a realization that God's justice is not about quick, superficial vengeance, it's about long-term, transformative healing. The person who hurts you may not face the consequences immediately, but when justice does come, it will be in a way that serves a much higher purpose. And sometimes, chosen ones, the justice that arrives isn't even about them. It's about you. It's about your growth, your healing, and your journey toward becoming the person God designed you to be. In the midst of waiting, it's easy to feel forgotten. When the wounds are fresh and the betrayal still stings, the silence can feel like abandonment. But know this, you are never forgotten. Every tear, every heartache, every injustice has been seen by God. He hasn't missed a single detail, and he's preparing something that will not only correct the wrongs, but will propel you into a new season of growth, blessing, and divine favor. His justice comes in ways that we cannot always predict, but when it does, it will restore balance in ways that you never imagined. Your role in this process is to keep trusting, chosen one. Keep believing in the higher plan that is unfolding, even when you can't yet see it. In the waiting, focus on your own healing and journey. Let go of the need to control how and when justice arrives, because when it comes from God, it will be perfect, fair, and right on time. The most important part of trusting divine timing is understanding that it's not about what happens to those who wronged you, it's about what happens to you. This time of waiting is meant to refine you, strengthen you, and prepare you for the blessings that are coming. The waiting can feel endless, especially when every day feels like a reminder of the injustice you've endured. But chosen ones, remember that God's sense of time is not ours. He's weaving together a larger plan, and sometimes that plan requires patience. It's in that space of waiting where the real growth happens. Trust that even in silence, God is working for your good. You are not forgotten. You are not overlooked. God sees everything, and his justice will come at the perfect moment, not a second too early, not a second too late. When it does, it will be something that not only addresses the wrongs done to you, but lifts you up into a season of blessing and purpose. Your job, chosen one, is to keep trusting, to keep growing, and to let go of the need for immediate vengeance. The justice that God has prepared for you is so much greater than anything you could imagine. Chapter 7, Rising Above You were never meant to live in the shadows of the wrongs done to you. You were meant to rise above, to soar to new heights, and to live in the fullness of who God created you to be. The people who hurt you don't define your destiny, God does. Every betrayal, every insult, every attempt to bring you down has no power over the destiny that God has set in motion for your life. And when you let go of the need for revenge, when you trust in his justice and his timing, you are freeing yourself to rise. 
This rising is more than just moving on from past hurts, it's about stepping into the divine path that has always been yours. It's about understanding that the pain you've endured wasn't meant to break you, but to shape you into the powerful being you are becoming. You weren't chosen to live a life of bitterness and resentment. You were chosen to be a beacon of strength, wisdom, and light, showing others that true power comes not from vengeance, but from trusting God's plan. Think about this, chosen one, every time you choose to rise above, you're rewriting the story that others have tried to impose on you. They might have thought they could keep you down, that their actions could permanently scar you, but with each step forward, you prove them wrong. God has been guiding you all along, even when it felt like you were walking through darkness. That darkness was not meant to be your permanent place, it was only a passage. And now, you are on the other side. When you let go of the need for revenge, you're not just releasing the past, you're stepping into your future. A future where your energy is no longer wasted on bitterness, but invested in growth. You're choosing to build, to create, to move forward with a heart free of the heavy chains that vengeance places on it. Those chains keep you tied to the very people who try to hurt you. And by releasing them, you are no longer tethered to their negativity. Instead, you're aligning yourself with God's purpose for you, one filled with clarity, strength, and endless possibilities. You're stepping into a future filled with peace, joy, and abundance. A future where you are no longer weighed down by the actions of others, but are lifted by your own strength, faith, and trust in God. You will find that the things that once held you back, the pain, the grudges, the desire to see those who wronged you suffer, will become distant memories. You won't need to look back, because what's ahead of you is so much brighter and so much greater than anything you could have imagined. This is your time, chosen ones. Your time to rise above the pain, the hurt, and the desire for vengeance. Your time to focus on your purpose, your growth, and your relationship with God. This is what it means to be chosen. It means you are destined for greatness, but that greatness doesn't come from striking back at those who try to tear you down, it comes from transcending them. It comes from proving through your own transformation that nothing can stop you when you walk in alignment with God's plan. God has been waiting for this moment, for you to release the weight of revenge and rise. He's been waiting for you to trust that he will handle what needs to be handled. Because when God takes your vengeance, it's not just about punishment, it's about justice that serves your highest good. And that's something far more powerful than anything you could have done on your own. When God steps in, his justice not only protects you, but elevates you. It places you in a position where you can fully embrace the greatness that has always been inside you. So rise, chosen ones. Rise above the negativity, the anger, the hurt. You are not defined by the struggles you faced, you are defined by the strength with which you overcome them. This is your journey of ascension, your path to becoming everything God created you to be. Trust in Him, let go of the need for vengeance, and watch as He opens doors for you that no man can close. This is what it means to rise. To let go of the past, embrace your future, and trust that God's justice will not only protect you, but propel you into your destiny. This is your time. Now go forth and rise above. Chosen ones, remember, vengeance is not yours to carry. God sees every injustice you faced, and he is already working on your behalf. Trust in his perfect timing and know that divine justice is far greater than anything you could ever imagine. Let go of the weight of revenge and focus on your higher calling. Your victory is not in striking back, but in rising above. If this message resonated, leave a comment with 77 foot to send that signal to the universe, like, and subscribe to Astral Aura to help us reach 10,000 subscribers. Stay blessed, chosen ones. Your breakthrough is coming.